Welcome on in everyone. Welcome to this video on April's astrology. I've got so much to say, too much to say. Matter of fact, it's so much that I'm going to break it into three videos. So if you are seeing this intro yet again, you've already seen it before, you can skip ahead. But those of you who have not seen it, please bear with me in a moment. I, I have a couple things that are I really need to say. I need to put it out there. Okay. So if you would indulge me for a couple minutes, just a couple minutes, uh, let me address a couple things. Okay. For those of you who have not heard it before. Um, reminder of the obvious. The title says this is a commentary video. So if you don't want to listen to commentary, which is basically my opinion, then you can click away now. Nobody's making you listen. There are a lot of videos out on YouTube that are just going to give you the facts, the nuts and bolts. And as a matter of fact, I already put a video out like that, that you can go watch if you want that. But the reality is that most people don't want that video. I get one third the views on that video that I'm getting on this video because people like controversy. So, you know, if you don't like it, then let's be adult and let's move on. You don't have to put a nasty comment down below like I got last month um, because you don't agree with my commentary when I told you up front it was a commentary, right? I know I'm gonna get a thicker skin about this, all right? I got a lot of Pisces placements, so yeah, I gotta get a thicker skin about it, all right? But you've been warned up front and I will say for the record, you know, I'm a freedom loving Aquarian, three Aquarius placements, so you're free to disagree. And I definitely practice people over politics. I practice principles over parties and politicians. And so I hope we can keep that a free environment here in our thinking. I do love a healthy debate. So if you want to disagree, you can comment down below. Let's hear it. Just be warned with all my Aquarius placements, you know, we get accused of having God complexes. No, I don't know everything. I'm not omniscient. <laughs> no one is, okay? But um, please realize that with me being an Aquarian and my Mercury in Aquarius, when I open my mouth, I have thought up, down, left, and right about this, and particularly on the subject of politics, for decades. Decades, okay? I was studying this stuff in the early 90s when the internet started, okay? And it's really no accident with all, most of my, you know, astrological activity in my natal chart is, is in the 10th house for me, which is a lot about government, a lot about corporations, the structures, the authorities uh, in society, all right? So it's natural for me to get into politics. Matter of fact, before I had this spiritual channel, I had a political channel. Oh, yeah. So if you want to disagree, yes, do so. Post your links in the comments down below, but realize I'm not a dummy. I'm not pulling this out of my ass. I'm not pulling it out of the ethers. Um, if you have been fooled, I will school you, okay? I'm, I'm queen of swords at the end of the day. I will drive a dagger of truth into the heart of the matter uh, because, you know, I understand that ignorance is expensive. We all should understand that right now. We are in the information age. Ignorance is a choice and it's expensive one at that. Looking at the last two years, we should all know that. It's not arrogance. I'm not trying to be arrogant here, but ignorance has cost a lot of people their lives. And so no more time for BS. And I'm asking the same out of you. Um, share this information, speak out, even though, you know, it ruffles people's feathers. Um, and that's what I've decided to do. Uh, this month, I am expanding upon this work, even though I had naysayers last month. And yes, I am, by the way, phasing out my important dates video. I put a lot of work into that, but like I said, it's very generic. We've got an overabundance of that. People are hungry for commentary right now, helping to connect the dots of these energies and how they relate to what is going on in the 3D, right? Connecting 5D to 3D. So I'm gonna be phasing out the important dates video. This is the last month I'm gonna have it and expanding upon the commentary that is so controversial, but I'm getting better views. Yes, you know, that by the way, puts me at risk of demonetization. Not that YouTube was paying me much anyway, <laughs> but we all, we all need to use our voices during this time. If you wanna hear more of that content, subscribe if you haven't already and activate the bell for notifications because I will be putting this out uh, monthly. And I am looking to phase in more astro tarot cont uh, content having to do with time sensitive 
political events. Some of y'all have seen the Tarot by Janine. She's one of the people out there that's doing this. And I think there's definitely a more of a demand for it. I had a, a viewer, thank you very much for you know encouraging me because I've been grappling with this for a while wanting to do this. So I finally, you know, I know like, okay, I'm gonna put more Astro Tarot on the political content. I'm gonna expand upon the astro commentary with you know tying in the news and politics obviously if that's not your thing you can click away you can unsubscribe i'm just to the point where i don't care anymore <laughs> i want to connect with my people okay and if you're not part of that tribe well you know happy trails to you right <laughs> um those of you who like my relationship content my tarot i am going to continue that as well with it lives on the full moons and the new moons and chat with y'all live just to you know chat with y'all once a month um that will be there okay so with that said let's get into the video all right let's talk about love romance relationships um this is a month where I think that we're going to continue to have a lot of focus on relationships because largely because of the lunar cycle, we've got the new moon in Aries, which we had on the first. I hope that went well for y'all. It's been kind of hitting me a little harder post, right? Like a couple days after it didn't hit me real hard on the day of, but I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel it now. Um, new moon in Aries on the first full moon in Libra on the 16th. And this is, you know, this contrast of um, self versus other, all right? And uh, Aries can represent uh, the child in the zodiac. Uh, it can represent the boss as well. Um, but Libra can also represent the diplomat. And so what I'm seeing here, and, and I don't know if you've been noticing it going on around you, is uh, this need for attention. People have been very demanding, like even my kids, who work in the restaurant business, they're like, what is up with people? They're coming into restaurants and they're just like hangry, like never before, like where's my food? And they're not even nice about it. It's, it's very um, demanding type of energy, which can be Aries, you know? Um, so I want to say, you know, watch out for attention seeking behavior. Um, with this Aries, you know, self focus around the first and then it transitioning more into what's going on with others. Um, is this need for attention healthy or toxic, right? I mean, self implies others. So, you know, it's not gonna be a totally black or white thing, right? Like with the new moon in Aries, it's had me on an empathic level thinking about myself, but again, it's in relation to others. So when we get into that full moon in Libra, thinking about others in relation to yourself, you see something is getting worked out through this month that is really putting a focus on this dichotomy. Those that will be most impacted by the lunar energies this month will be the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, and then closer to the end of the month when we have the solar eclipse in Taurus, probably the most impacted signs will be the fixed signs Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. And by the way, I put out a short little video on the solar eclipse coming up and I am running a special this month if you want to know uh, for like 50 bucks, 30 minutes, how this is uniquely impacting your natal chart where these eclipses in April and May are going to be uniquely impacting you in your natal chart and so buckle up as I said in that video because we are coming into a time of holy shifts a lot of change especially you bring this in airy season and by the way it's our last month of retrogrades we're going into retrograde season at the end of this month so go 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 make it happen while you can and i think one of the things relationally that we need to work on making happen is some heart-to-heart -heart conversations um, your needs and values versus theirs and the best time to probably do that is the first half of the month recognize how insecurities within yourself and others are damaging people damaging relationships right this new moon in aries brought about a very self-reflective energy i think for many of us i definitely felt it and so uh right i've i've been becoming aware uh through others 
not just one individual, but several people, I've been seeing how this issue of insecurity is playing out where, right, where you see like people won't give compliments, um, right, doing nice things for other people. Why are you just not being nice? Oh, because you're afraid that this person's gonna get cocky, overconfident, they're gonna think they've, you know, got one over on you, that you're weak, that you're vulnerable, and that, you know, they're gonna take advantage of you, they're gonna exploit you, they're gonna get some kind of leverage. So there's a fear of vulnerability subconsciously driving in vulnerability that's coming out in some nasty ways. Like, I'm afraid to just give you an honest compliment because I'm afraid, I'm insecure, that you're gonna take advantage of me. Like, these kind of weird things I'm seeing going on in people and it's making me look at my own relationships and pe with people. Where have I held back and not been kind or nice to people because I'm afraid they're gonna get too heady <laughs> or they're gonna get a big head and I've even heard some people say that to me. Well, you know, you're really good at that, but I didn't wanna tell you because I don't want you to get a big head. Really, come on now, let's, let's get beyond this, shall we? <laughs> this could be a month, a good month for working on trust issues, um, not just within ourselves and with others, but with the universe at large, especially if that trust has been damaged. I'm feeling that push myself. Um, and, and definitely if these are trust issues having to do with money matters, values, I could see that definitely coming into focus uh, with the North Node in Taurus, South Node in Scorpio that started at the beginning of this year and will have for the next year and a half. Um, you know, I found myself in situations where, you know, I, I had to apologize for some kind of you know, shortfall on my end, which which was painful, you know, but then coming to this place in these relationships of saying, I'm sorry, you know, I'm sorry that my problems are causing you problems and, um, you know, trying to heal that relationship by acknowledging the shortfall, apologizing and then doing what you can to correct it. And, you know, that correction might not be so easy because of all the energies that we're all dealing with. So I think that just as a, friendly reminder let's you know try not to personalize when people are failing falling short because a lot of us right now are going through this it, it might not be personal at all people are working through their own fears insecurities inabilities to trust um, but I think it's a good time to particularly closer to the beginning of the month with a full moon in Aries do that self-reflection of you know um, how can I correct these insecurities within myself so it's not bleeding over into these relationships and um, it's not creating or triggering insecurity in others now pretty soon you know early on in this month april 5th all the way into may 2nd we've got venus and pisces which as i said in my last video on astrology for this month you know with the important dates that uh, it's a very beautiful energy that makes us relationally um, more seductive, more open to seduction. Uh, but I did say, like in that video, I'll say it again, it bears mentioning, you know, uh, be careful with what you are believing. Be careful with boundaries. Blurred boundaries happens a lot in Pisces. Martyrdom, putting oneself aside for others who may might never do that for you, <laughs> you know. Um, or, you know, you're doing it and they didn't ask that of you, but you're doing it, you're, it's coming from this place of pain that you wish other people would prioritize you. And so, you, you know, you're prioritizing them. And that's coming out of a place that's unhealed. So just be careful with that. The first two weeks of April, um, there could be conflict with others. Let's not lie, you know, with all this Martian energy, Aries, right? Um, there could be relationship drama, and if there is, it might have to do with issues of independence versus interdependence. What is this showing you about what you need from others? What are you being shown needs to change? That might be a tough pill to swallow, particularly, you know, if you're like myself, um, who, you know, I've gone through a lot of spiritual awareness and growth with this issue, but come to the painful understanding that even when I speak up and express my needs, I'm still surrounded by a lot of people who are just flat telling me to my face, gee, shucks, sorry, sucks to be you, but can't help you with that, won't help you with that. It's, it's, it, it, you know, I, and I'm not making light. If you've gone through that struggle where you're like, you know what, I did speak up for myself. I am clear on my needs and I am clearly communicating it and it's still not lining up. Look, I hear you, I hear you, Chiron and Aries. Oh, we're gonna talk about that toward the end, okay? 
by the way, I'll do a little bit of personal sharing on Chiron and Aries, which I think is going to be relevant for very relevant collectively because we are going through Chiron and Aries transit right now, but most definitely relevant for those of you born 1969 through 1976, basically the 70s babies, okay, like myself. Uh, holy crap, we are getting triggered big time over that. Let me say though, the last two weeks of this month, try if you can uh, with all this Martian energy to avoid getting into petty disagreements, okay? Some conflicts need to be faced head on. We have warriors for a reason. Aries is the warrior, right? Some battles need to be fought, some don't. Pick your battles, I think is the advice. And the petty ones is the one I really wanna caution you about with Mercury going into Gemini at the end of the month on the 29th. You need to ask yourself before you get into verbal sparring with people, ask yourself, does this matter? Will this matter two weeks from now, two months from now, two years from now? Determine within yourself to have conversations that count. There's also gonna be themes of receiving with a, a lot of uh, Piscean energy that we are in the midst of right now. A lot of themes of receiving love or longing to receive love or something that is amiss in your life, something that is out in the ethers, it seems to escape you, you can't, you can't seem to get your hands on it, all right? It's the intangible, right? <laughs> and if receiving, if, if you're receiving love during this time, good for you, my God, enjoy it. But I do wanna say, stay grounded, definitely with Neptune and Pisces, okay? And Venus and Pisces is exalted, but again, it's like, whoa. You know, and Jupiter and Pisces is really enlarging. If there is any kind of Neptuning out and, you know, projecting uh, fantasies into people, uh, seeing who the partner you want to believe they are versus who they really are, right? This is reality versus fantasy. <laughs> if you're getting too far gone in this stuff, I mean, you, you got to know the energy is there to allow you to do it. And, and that, that could bring some sober reality checks later, later. So please stay grounded. If you are on the other opposite end of the spectrum and you feel like you're longing for love that is amiss in your life, sit with that, feel that, really get clear within yourself about what is missing, what need is being unmet, how can you meet it? Yeah, maybe you need to express yourself more clearly, more directly, maybe you need to be more uncompromising, okay? Um, but again, it's not an easy thing. I'm not gonna say it's right. This might not be something that you get solved in Aries season. Try not to run from this feeling of discontent because that pain point in your life is bringing some truth, some awareness, some wisdom about how you need to balance your ideals with reality. Now I'm gonna say if you're single and you're going through this energy of where's the love right um is love even real anymore do people love anymore okay <laughs> a good way to channel this for the time being with this energy is probably going to be um, creatively creative arts like if you are an artist a creator or you're doing some kind of spiritual work and you know that's what i'm doing it's a good way to kind of redirect and channel the energy constructively in the absence of better options as you know, I've been talking since Pisces season about doing a lot of self-healing work, and I think that some of that can continue on this month, especially around the 12th. It's going to be a really good time with Jupiter conjunct Neptune and Pisces, so get out in nature. I don't know what happened. Like, today it's so cloudy, and yesterday it was so, to me, Aries with the sun so bright and shining, And then, but, I, you know, when it was beautiful weather yesterday for me to come out here, distractions like constant like change moving people interrupting i need attention i need this i need that and i couldn't get my work done and now i finally like put my foot down with my you know get into that aries i am energy i am i have to go to work get out of my way <laughs> then i'm here and i don't know what's going on with the uh the weather but anyway find a beautiful day or just make it happen regardless to get out in nature and definitely getting near water, getting going barefoot in nature, um, you know, is probably gonna help you get grounded and help you clear out your energy and get more in tune. Um, and this is a great way to deal with maybe wanting to get away and escape from something. That's a positive way because I can tell you around the 12, a lot of people are gonna be finding not so positive ways to Neptune out. 
right? That's a healthy, what I said to you with a nature walks is a healthy way of resetting your energy. But there's a lot of people who around the 12th, be aware, they're going to get into escapism through drugs, alcohol, because of something that they're trying to cope with rather than resolve. And granted, maybe some of you have been trying to resolve it, resolve it, resolve it, and things have just not come into alignment for whatever reason. Maybe it's not your fault, right? Other people have free will. There are energies that are out of our control. Maybe the energies are not supporting it right now. Whatever the reason, the best way to cope is by getting out in nature rather than Neptuning out on drugs and alcohol. I want to also warn you about people Neptuning out through um, self-martyrdom. You know, I mentioned the self-martyrdom earlier in terms of these interpersonal relationships, but I'm also seeing it with what's going on in the world at large, right? Uh, which I'm going to talk to you more about in the next, uh, probably, yeah, in the next two videos. I'll, I'll definitely in a third video out of these three, I will... Uh, talk more about like what's going on in the world at large and how you are seeing collectively people are getting into this self-martyrdom through all this virtue signaling and whatnot about the Ukraine crisis, the Russian-Ukraine issue. And I am seeing that a lot of people are getting lost in this Neptunian fog, which is also the media, you know, and you are seeing a lot of people and you probably know them go on social media you're gonna see it you probably you might be friends with them family with them maybe you're married to them <laughs> i don't know okay people trying to find meaning in their lives and purpose through popular causes that are going on um you know like these i stand with ukraine and putting up these ukrainian flags and sweet jesus maybe you don't even know anything about ukraine but you want to go volunteer your life as sacrifice for some other country's issues of which you know nothing of, really, honestly. And who does? When I get into that video, I'm going to talk about all the little dirty secrets coming out. Like, do you want to get in the crossfire of that? And I am not taking sides. It looks like there's more than two people, bad people involved in that. But you have people wanting to offer up their lives as sacrifice. Why? because they're looking for a sense of meaning and purpose in their lives and they're getting lost in, in, in a Neptunian fog. They're getting lost in the illusion that media is putting forth. So be gentle with others, but firm about that stuff. And I also wanna encourage you to definitely be gentle with yourself because of what's going on with Chiron and Aries during Aries season, uh, especially those of you, like I said, who were born 1969 through 1976. We are the Chiron and Aries generation. A lot of us getting triggered right now with self-worth issues we've been carrying with us for life. And, um, be, that's because right now, collectively, Chiron is in Aries, has been since February of 2019, and will remain with us roughly until April 2027. This is a, you know, usually an eight to nine year transit. Um, and so I'm going to say, you know, everybody's feeling the self-worth issues right now. Um, a lot of self-concern, a lot of ego. What about me? What about me? Uh, collectively is going on a lot of self-evaluation and in an anal analysis and maybe dealings with a feeling of of powerlessness okay a loss of autonomy um a loss of independence okay we're all collectively feeling that but if you are like me a 70s baby probably getting triggered even more so for those of you who don't know the the generation prior to us that went through this transit were the depression babies okay we were born at a time that was very difficult. Everybody knows what the depression babies went through with that Chiron and Aries, okay? The scarcity, the lack, all right? But for the 70s babies, it was probably arguably more, uh, not just on a material level, but uh, I'd say more on an emotional level because we were the latchkey kids. We were the first generation to come home to an empty house. Things went on in my upbringing that were normalized that are now against the law, like riding around two, three years old in the front seat, you know, on the little uh, armrest of the car, no car seat, two, three years old, riding around in the back of pickup trucks. A lot of children died from things like that. Playground equipment, metal. Oh, oh, wow. <laughs> it's coming. I'm going to have to finish elsewhere, but I'm going to say change is coming. 
buckle up. I've been saying this. I really feel this has a lot to do with the eclipse, but I'm also feeling powerful, potent, collective. All right? It's in the ethers. It's in the atmosphere. Let me wrap up what I'm saying. I checked the weather report. It's not supposed to rain. It's just going to be kind of doing that today, but um, it is so dark out here. It seems gloomy, and I chose black to wear. It's like, what? <laughs> Oh God, what's having to end? What is having to end with this shift? Anyway, all right, let me get back on track. 70s babies came out of that upbringing, the emotional neglect, right? We came out of this time where at a subconscious level, whether it was directly communicated or not, we have the sense I'm not important. I'm not being prioritized. Um, a lot of us felt like I talked to a girlfriend of mine um, about the same age and she said I, that she felt like she was an accessory in her mother's life. Her mother was going through a lot of relationships, men in and out, and her and her sisters were put through all of this. And they were like the Cinderella's of the house while her mom lived her life. She said, you know, I felt like we were just an accessory. We were along for her ride. And I said, you know, I felt like that too. You know, like, ah, so what? I had a kid with this person, you know, in the seventies, all the people, everybody was getting divorces left and right. And you know, the psychologists were saying, oh, kids are more resilient than you think. Oh my God, now they're finding out the damage, the damage, right? Again, it's not about what was done it was about what wasn't done what wasn't there for you okay and uh, maybe on a subconscious level you're aware that being treated like an option or an unwanted obligation a bill to pay an inconvenience whatever that is deeply rooted in your formative years your psyche i think i'm going to finish this up in my car because even though the weather report told me it's not going to rain it's just going to be thunder like this I'm, I'm not, I'm not liking this. <laughs> I'm gonna finish this up in the car. Okay, Spidey senses saved me. Ignore weather reports. Pay attention to your intuition, all right? <laughs> it's now raining, I kid you not. Within less than five minutes of me shutting that down and coming to my car, bam. It was already raining by the time I finished moving everything to my car, so. And the weather report said there would not be rain today. This is, I'm just gonna tell you this, an omen, okay? You can say I'm reading too much into it, but my intuition is saying, listen, you better watch the media, or actually better yet don't, okay? Because you can't trust, you can't trust these people, right? I can't even rely on meteorologists to get it 100% accurate. Why rely on these teleprompter readers to be accurate? I'm gonna get into that in the next segment, okay? Let me wrap this up about, you know, Chiron and Aries, because I wanna talk to y'all, particularly those of you getting triggered right now with these self-worth issues, my generation or not, it doesn't matter. We're all going through it. Pay attention to Aries right now in your life. I'm gonna do a little bit of personal sharing here. If you are not interested in that, again, you can just click away. You don't have to watch it, nobody's making you. You don't then have to comment down below and say, you know, I'm not here to listen about you, I'm here just to, right, and there are people who do that, trust me. <laughs> I've, been, I've been on this channel for like how many years now, okay? So we gotta put it out there, all right? But I'm gonna say, pay attention to the areas in your life because God might be using them for a purpose. A healing purpose in your life right Chiron is a wounded healer and in Aries it's like okay there's some aspect here of healing and you know I ain't gonna lie to you it's maybe it's not gonna feel pleasant okay let's not sugarcoat because a lot of people when they hear the word healing they're thinking oh this is gonna be so you know lovely and therapeutic and you know like going to a day spot no think of a burn unit at a hospital okay so this Use that with a grain of salt when I say that maybe God is using some Aries in your life for healing, okay? I hope y'all can hear me well through all this rain. So, I'm going to tell you uh, that I not only have my Chiron in Aries in my natal chart, but I also have Juno in Aries in my natal chart. 
and uh, they're pretty close together so it's there's a lot of overlap there I have had a lot of pain with a lot of areas in my life um, the the man that I thought I was gonna marry Aries um, my best childhood friend you know from age 11 to like in the end of my 20s um, Aries um, I've met different Aries through the years I always seem to hit it off with them like magic marvelous you know um, but then at the end of the day there's some um, always some kind of painful revelation that I don't I, you know I don't really fit with them or I, I feel like I don't belong or um, it's not gonna work out uh, always and it, it just it pains me because you don't always meet people like that that you click with right that's kind of a rare thing and I will say you know like back to uh, you know this this person this Aries that I thought I was gonna marry and that didn't work out you know I definitely tried to move on and, and make a life and I did apart from him but uh, it's always been a soul wound that's Chiron and Aries it's always been a soul wound and um, unfortunately I have not been able to heal those um, those unfinished issues with him but people have free will you know and uh, Aries is not the kind to go back to the past and fix and repair. Aries is more likely to go start something new and fresh. They're not going to go back to, you know. <laughs> and so um, I think what happens is if you have unfinished business with somebody and they're not willing to help you get that healing with them, then God will send other people in. And over the last, I'd say, two years, I have encountered a couple Aries men who, and it's just an oddity to me that it's like the same kind of issues that I needed to work through with that original one uh, were coming up with these two others. It's kind of reopened wounds, but I'm trying to look at it from a higher perspective. And I'm trying not to take it so personal anymore because yes, Chiron and Aries will personalize, will be like, well, you don't value me. There's a feeling of irrelevance. That feeling of impotence and irrelevance just gets brought up to the surface and I see like God is using those people to like bring it back up but come at it from a different angle of okay so how can you deal with this constructively uh, without spiraling out of control because I would say definitely with the Aries number one you know I was spiraling downward into depression and you know low self-worth and all of that um and other, other circumstances in life for people that maybe triggered that in me, but um, nobody quite triggered it like Aries number one. So um, now these other Aries that have been coming into my life, triggering yet again, but it's almost like spirit is saying, okay, you know, how do you feel this pain, but you don't, you don't let it control you. You don't let it derail you. You don't let it take over your life. You know, this is about looking at that pain from a higher perspective. Not letting the past have power over you anymore. Not letting the past control your present or your future. So I want to remind y'all that, and because I, I have to remind myself, healing is not about not feeling the pain. It's not. It's about feeling it. Um, letting those painful memories resurface and then again not being controlled by it or disempowered by it it's about spiraling up seeing it from a higher perspective rather than spiraling down just getting like sucked into it and drained you know totally drained in by depression apathy hopelessness so some of you might be feeling you know if you've gone through similar things in life some of you might be feeling issues resurfacing again with these self-worth issues or confidence issues or insecurity feeling of irrelevance impotence uh, during this time when those painful feelings or memories resurface you might think to yourself my god i thought i got over this i thought i dealt with this why is this coming back up it's because it's you're look at it from a higher perspective it's spiraling up right so I'm going to close out by giving some general advice about this month uh, with all things considered relationally, energetically, um, try to aim for diplomacy as much as possible, try to aim for win-win outcomes, being as mindful of your own needs and values as you are about others. Try to release limitations and burdens 
if you can, if it's helpful to you. In other circumstances, you might find that you need to embrace boundaries that empower you and empower others. Try not to personalize other people's insecurities. Try to be more objective. Again, look at it from a higher perspective if you can. Really look at how your own insecurities have been bleeding into relationships, uh, coloring them in a way that is just not in good in light, you know what I mean? And vice versa. This might help you to deal with feelings of anger, bitterness, resentment in a more constructive, objective way. And realizing that a lot of people, they're not aware of their own insecurities. They're not doing the self-healing work. And so they don't even understand what's driving them to do that. Like, right, they just hold, why are they holding their tongue? When they could give you a nice compliment, they could just say something nice. They could tell you they care about you. I mean, really, how much they care about you. Oh, but I'm not going to share that with you because you might try to get over on me then. Like, right, this kind of stuff. We've got to realize how these relationships, we are subconsciously creating or triggering insecurity within other people because of our own insecurity. And just make a decision not to be a conduit of that as much as possible. A conduit of that bad energy, you know. Also, I think this is a good month to recognize partnerships that are based on insecurity, right? Like you got with this person out of fear of, you know, not being secure within yourself and needing, feeling like you need to depend on this person or you're staying with them for those reasons. Also, you know, um, not letting people get close to you because you're afraid, you're insecure of them becoming dependent on you. You know, just this is weird dynamics here. Or people who are, again, they're coming from this place of, I'll give you the compliments, but that's because I am trying to get leverage on you. I am trying to manipulate you. I am, I do want you to have a big head. I want you to think that I'm on your, uh, you know, your cheerleading team. <laughs> Ego awareness is, I think, something that is very important uh, this month. And everybody doing their part of owning, acknowledging and owning their, their shortfalls, you know, saying you're sorry, sorry, my problems are causing you problems and do your best to repair it. Collectively, you know, like I said, there's so many people right now who are dealing with, you know, finding meaning through the current thing, whatever the current thing is. Um, for example, COVID, Ukraine, next is going to be climate change. These are people we've got to realize these are people who lack inner security. And they're going to get led like sheep to the slaughter. They're followers, so beware of this. This is social engineering that is going on. These are people who are kind of, I'm sorry, weak-minded, weak-willed. And they're going to follow the herd. They're going to just be led like sheep to the slaughter. So, you know, we're tribal creatures. Um, and the globalists know it. But unfortunately, they're exploiting the weaker among us with this type of stuff. So try this month to find your own inner security your own inner compass and help others find theirs realize that your own self-worth is not based on your own ability to comply with mass formation psychosis for example wearing a mask getting a jab posting a ukraine flag on your social media or saying i stand with ukraine this is not what gives you self-worth break the mold do you but you got to know who you are right it's that i am aries energy who are you apart from social engineers social engineering in the media telling you what to do who to be what the current thing is you see that that my friends is a lost dog oh boy i just gotta download off of that He's looking for his pack. He's looking for his tribe. Find the right pack, the right tribe. Um, that's all I got to say right now, okay? I hope you join me for part two. We're going to discuss money and career. Career and money. Part three will be the world at large. I'm going to get into a lot about the monetary system. Hopefully give you some actionable advice. And we'll also talk in part three about what's going on globally with politics. I hope you'll join me. Y'all be blessed.